What's going on everybody? Hope you're having a swell day so far. Jeremiah here from Rebel in the Backyard, a pond and gardening channel packed full of informative and how-to videos. In today's video, we're gonna be doing, giving you detailed instructions on how to build this double barrel filter. I've done the single barrel filter just like these in the past, and that one's done really well, and it's worked really well for me. It probably could have got away with doing the single barrel on this pond but I really wanted even more filtration so I could really pump the food in here, um, especially when it starts getting warmer and I move tilapia into this one while my koi are in the big pond outside. Before we get into this build, let's head inside and go over the design of this filtration first. So this is a double barrel filter build over the top of the pond. The first barrel is raised up higher on a platform and the inlet is over here for that barrel. So the pump will be over across the pond, come across and then into the bottom of this barrel. Not the very bottom, we want it up as high as it can go um, over that milk crate area. Because we're slowing down water so much in this area that we really expect some of the heavier solids to settle down to the bottom. And anything that's lighter will float up through the different layers of rock. We start with this big base layer of rock, which we really have there just to support these other layers. Um, obviously, any of the rock is going to help with beneficial bacteria conversion, but these bigger rocks are just a base to pre prevent the small rocks from falling down. So we've got the larger river rock over the top of these rocks to have the water start moving quicker through those rocks and to start capturing some more solids. But then really we get into capturing more when we get into this one to two inch river rock. And that's a much deeper layer on this barrel. Then up top we have the pea gravel and the pea gravel will capture a lot more of the solids. From there it drains from this three inch out of this barrel and then that is now the inlet for the next barrel down. Also going through the milk crate down below and you have the exact same idea happening here with your large base rocks. Water is going to settle and then we go into the thinner layer of this one to two inch rock than we had up here. So we're really jumping to the smaller rock faster in this barrel than we did there. We had a large layer of the one to two. I'm just putting the layer of one to two in here until I get a good coverage so that I can put in the three quarter minus crushed gravel without having any fall through. And then the quarter minus crushed, which is also a pretty thick layer. That's gonna capture a lot of the finer s solids. Any sediments that are finer are gonna be caught in this area. Then we're going to drain out in two two inch drains back down into the pond. So now let's go ahead and jump into this build. Okay, so the very first thing I gotta do is take my barrels and get the tops off. To cut these tops off, because I gotta use two of these, I cut them right where the barrel becomes the smallest at the top. If I cut right along that line, then I can take this lid and flip it over and use it as a lid. So I gotta get this thing cut off here and then get this thing washed out. So once I clean this up, then the lid just goes, if I want a lid. So I got a lot of extra little stragglies, burrs, so I'm going to deburr those. I can use a deburr tool. This works great on the inside. Two great products for cleaning out your barrels. Dawn dish soap and Simple Green. I usually use both just to be safe. This is concentrated, so. So 
So real quick, let me describe how these filters work. I have a two inch line that's going to be feeding into this barrel. And the two inch line is going to have lots of openings throughout the inner part of the barrel. The line that's coming into the two inch line is going to be a one inch line. So there's going to be pressure built up from the pump and we want that pressure to reduce by a volume increase. So that's why we move it up to a two inch line. And then we want it to reduce even further into the barrel. So we have lots of openings for the water to flow and we want it to sl flow up slowly and then it will speed up through the media that's in the barrel. So now on this one, it's pretty high up here. I want to have a three inch drain. I'll give myself like a probably an inch or so at the top. I'm using a four inch hole saw for a three inch uniseal. You got to be a little careful with these when you go in. So you want to run it slow. I've heard uh, people have a lot of success with a clean cut backwards, so you have to start the drill going forward because this inner drill wants to run that way. But with plastic, I've heard people can run it backwards, so I'm going to test that because it does try to jump around on you even with the smaller than this one. Boy, that's going to take a lot of work to try to cut that backwards. I know some people said to do it backwards, but I don't think so. Just be very careful forward. Just as a double check, I got my three inch uniseal. I'm just going to see how well it fits and it's tight, so that's good. That's what it's supposed to do. So my three inch on this other barrel that's going to be the, this one drains down into the other barrel. I have to set the height off of the barrel from the milk crate that's going in there. I will drill the hole in here with my four inch hole saw because this four inch then acts as the clearance for my three inch pipe. So in this case, I got to stick that drill out a little farther. Most of the time you don't want it sticking out too far. This is a weird scenario where it's beneficial if it sticks out because I don't really have a hole that I can drill to pile it. I have to use the V groove in here. So I'll hold the drill downward while I'm drilling through. Let's try running this one backwards. Still don't like it. So the next thing I gotta do on this, this is the second barrel three inch drain into this one. It has two two inch drains coming off of it. Again with this milk crate I do need to determine where the hole is going to sit on here so where the pipe's coming through and then that's how I figure out the height that I'm drilling the hole on the barrel. Okay, so we're going to show two different methods for the drain lines. I've heard some people talk to me about how uniseals are not easy to get in some places. So uh, one of the other options I wanted to show was a bulkhead fitting. So we're going to do both of these examples for this drain. Uniseals are less expensive for me, so I prefer to use uniseals. Plus, I don't have to have extra fittings. So all in all, then now I have to pay for an extra fitting besides the more expensive bulkhead fitting. So first one I'll do is uniseal and then I'll do a bulkhead on this one. 
for the one inch unit seal, I need an inch and three quarter hole. So, and I want this nice and low. Some people have talked about putting it down below, putting this up on spacers and kicking it out from the bottom. I'm still gonna have to have that pipe in there a little bit. So this is not any different. Now for this bulkhead fitting, you've got three parts, a nut, a seal, and then the main piece that goes through. And that piece has threads in it. Basically you need to drill a hole that's bigger than your thread. So for the bulkhead fitting, now I've got the nut that's gonna go on the back side, and then the threaded piece goes through, but that seal needs to be on the outer edge. So it's just gonna go in there just like this. So there's that rubber seal. So this type of seals on the outside face. The cool thing about the unit seals is they seal all on the inside of that diameter. If you have a thinner wall piece that you're trying to seal, this actually does a better job. I'm gonna hold that with my foot and then go in there and put the nut on there. Next thing to do, take some channel locks and make sure that's super tight. There we go, it should be good. So I have all of my uniseals in here. These are my drains for this one. This is essentially how it's gonna be set up in the greenhouse where the line is coming in from this side and then it percolates up through here, drains out this one and it's gonna drain down into this one lower and then it percolates up through there and then drains out these two here. Additionally, on this back side, I have my two drain lines over here. So I've got my uniseal, one inch uniseal drain and then I have the bulkhead fitting here that's gonna come off and those will go out, out over and outside, connect to a hose that can run and drain this. When I do a clean outs, I can drain that poop water out onto all the plants. And that is why I have amazing gardens. So the next thing we gotta do is we've got to cut the pipes and I'm gonna start with the three inch line that uh, goes here to there. So I'm gonna get that stuff cut Basically, I'm just going to get these two pieces cut. Once I get it set up in the greenhouse, then I'll measure the exact length between this one and that one and cut that one later. So I'll get these two shorter ones cut. This one is really short. It's probably six inches or so. And then that one has to go the same sticking out as this one, but then also it's got to come through in here and it's going to have those holes down the, the sides of it. So that's going to go there. So this one is going to get the holes placed in the sides of it, on both sides. And that's so uh, when the water comes in, it's going to have more space. So it'll slow down even more, but it'll also spread out in the barrel and then work its way up through the rocks. Okay, now I just got to deburr it up. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a half round file and I need to just smooth out these edges. I don't want any sharp edges when I push it through that unit seal. If there's any sharp edges in there, I could risk cutting that rubber and then the seal won't work so great. So that's all I'm doing, just getting rid of all of those sharp edges. So the next thing I gotta do is I gotta get these chamfers on. I need that chamfer so that I can push that thing into there. It's very difficult to get into these unit seals. It takes a lot of pressure to push that in. I don't have a stand-up belt sander, but I have a portable belt sander like this, and it works pretty well for if I flip it over, I can just create a good chamfer. Okay, so now for my two inch lines, I gotta come into this barrel here and I need about an 18 inch piece for that. Gotta get this one to burn now. This one's gotta be a little longer cause it's gotta come out past this other three inch line and then drop down on the other side of it. It can't come into it. 
So I'm guessing a foot maybe. In the past when I've shown how to push pipes into these uniseals, I've used usually this 3-in-1 oil. You can use a WD-40. I've also used dish soap. Dish soap works really, really well. Just make sure you don't use something nasty, that's all. So I'll use dish soap here. One tiny drop is all I need and I can use that all the way around. So I got that sticking out there about three inches, so that's what I can do to make this one as well when I do this three inch. So it's got to feed through. So this one's a little different. I'm gonna push it in. Then I gotta make sure it aligns with the milk crate below. There's a hole in there. All right, same idea over here with this two inch. Just going to get my one inch drain set up over here. I'll do this one two inch. And then we're about to move into the greenhouse. Let's see if I can get this one in there. Could be difficult because it doesn't have much of a chamfer on it. Bam. Did it. All right, it's time to get this stuff inside and uh, continue on from there. The first thing that I want to do is work on the drains because I need to figure out angles of these and that might be able to be pushed back that way a little bit more and still get past here. So basically I'm going to have that line come straight over here and with the 45 degree fitting on there, um, you can see then that I get to move that way. Then I'll go, I'll grab this and I have to tape the thread there and then thread in the fitting to the bulkhead and then I'll go one inch out there and 45 off of that as well. Okay, that's all taped up now. There we go. All right, we will be moving back and forth a little bit here. We'll be going to the drain side to this side because I got to start figuring out where everything's located and it takes a little bit of like back and forth thinking. So I've got my three inch dudes here. These are not cheap, unfortunately. Honestly, nothing's cheap anymore. I'm gonna get my board that runs across here so I can get over there and work. Okay, I'm gonna glue these pieces because I know they're going in together. That'll work, so this one inch line then will come over and down to my pump down there. So I'm feeling pretty confident about where that one's sitting now. So I'm gonna move this one out of my way, just over to the back here, so that I can start stoning this one. First thing I'm gonna do is get some much larger stones and put them down in the lower level down here, right on top of that crate. So there's no rocks under the crate. 
uh, and then the big rocks go down to prevent any of the next l layer smaller of rocks from falling down inside and so on and so forth and then it will come and drain down into this one where there will still be some big rocks doing the same thing and then uh, I'll quickly get to the three quarter minus and then I'll do a quarter minus to fill that thing up. Alright, I'm gonna get the pump put in place and then uh, run my line over to first barrel. Next thing I gotta do is connect here to there. So I'm gonna get that measured up and then get it connected. I need that in place before I set this with, before I start putting the rocks in here. Okay, so very happy that I finally got this set up because this water is getting so bad. I'm feeling very guilty as a fish owner because it's taken me too long to get this filter running. There's fish right there. I don't even think they're probably more than six inches deep, or maybe a foot. Six inches to a foot down in the water, but you just can't see it. You can't see anything unless they're all the way at the top. So let's go ahead and kick on the filter and get this thing working and we'll come back and see what does it look like afterwards. I just plugged it in so the pump is flowing. You can hear the water in this one. You can actually physically see that water pumping into this one. At a much too high of rate, I will also say, but that's okay. That pump is far too big for this and later maybe I'll get a smaller pump for it, but it'll kind of mellow out right here. Now it's uh, just reaching the top of the crate. So now it's starting to go up through the rock. See how much faster it starts moving? Because the, the pace speeds up as it goes through the smaller rock. All right, now we're up here and we're seeing it coming up over. So it'll slow down again here and it's already starting to drain. See it now here. hasn't reached the top of the crate yet so once it does reach the top of the crate which is right about in this area then you'll see it speed up here we go right here now we're getting to these rocks and it's moving much faster now working its way up through this gravel 
I only have the three quarter minus in here right now. I have to go get some quarter minus for the top layer up here. So it'll slow down again because it's now already, ooh, that's really gross looking. Luckily it will filter itself out. That's also percolating a lot. So that is uh, not what we really like to look at here. This is pretty dirty, but it'll all go into the pond and then it will clean itself out. It's not anything horrible for the fish. It's just a little dirt. And I rinsed this out before actually running this one because I knew it was dirty. All right, here we go. Now we're getting to the two inch drains. Come on, don't fall behind there. That scared me a little bit. I thought we were going to go over. Those two inch drains are just making it. That's probably a lot to do with the 90s that are on them. You can see what's going on here. This water level has dropped a lot. I'm gonna get some more water in here. So you can see the water clarity is getting so much better. So I kicked these guys at 45 degrees. This is the drains coming off of this. So that one drains to this one. This one fills, drains to this and over there and then I got 45 degrees running off that direction to get some current moving in here I wanted it to kind of do this like this around a loop thing here benefit is, is they really are enjoying hanging out over there now they were not liking it when the water was shooting straight down into the water but now that it creates a current they keep swimming back and forth around over there by that the drain lines. So it gives, uh, gives them a little bit of a current to play in. Alright, this is where we're at now. <clears throat> it is uh, pretty impressively clear. You can see over here, that's pretty far down there. About three feet deep right there. So you can see the fitting down there. And the pump actually, you can see the label on the pump right there. There's a little bit of a reflection off the top from the light in the greenhouse, but you get the idea that the water is pretty clear. Fish are looking good. Hey guys, nice to see you again. you guys like this video if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel I like this filter design because of the ease of maintenance now I didn't show you the maintenance on these because honestly they're not going to need any maintenance for a couple months it's usually two three months before I have to do any clean outs on these I will be doing a video for the maintenance of these in a later video down the road one of the cool things that I do with my filtration systems is I do run hook them up to hoses so when I'm cleaning out that poop water I am putting it straight onto my vegetable plants um, and that really makes everything thrive. It's very similar to aquaponics, which is what I've got going on here, and you can check those videos, videos out as well. I have constant flowing wastewater, although I don't want the solid poops going into this. I have more instead the nitrates and nitrite waste going into there and feeding the plants. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any wonderful videos we have coming, and while you're waiting, if you're bored, check out some of these other videos. Go ahead, check them out. I'll see you in one of those videos.